The Excel formula bar is where we spend the most time writing, examining, debugging, and fixing Excel formulas. The formula bar's default configuration has a few issues. The text can be small and difficult to read, especially on large monitors running high resolutions. Long formulas may be visually truncated, preventing you from seeing the entire formula. And long formulas can be difficult to understand because the formula steps all run together in a single line. Let's see how we can solve each of these issues. And as a bonus, at the end of the video, I'll show you a super cool impress your friends way of zooming in and out of Excel spreadsheets. Let's start with text size. The size of the formula bar's text is a bit small and can be difficult to read if you're running a larger monitor at a high resolution. Or what I find in my case when I'm teaching courses and I have my screen duplicated on a larger screen in the front of the classroom, the students in the back of the classroom will often not be able to read what's in my formula bar because the text is too small. We can customize the size of the text in the formula bar. Now this is not done with a font change like you would do in a normal cell. What we need to do is go up to File and then go to Options. In the General section, we want to find the option labeled Font Size. The default is 11 points. Now we don't want to make it too large, but you'll want to experiment with these various numbers and see what works for you. For me, most situations, 22 points works really well. When you hit OK, you will be required to restart Excel for this change to take effect. So I'll restart Excel, and now you can see the font size is much easier to read. But now this brings us to problem number two. When you have longer formulas and you can't read the entire formula on one line, the formula will get truncated, especially if you're running this larger font size. We can increase the height or the space that we give to the formula bar in a couple different ways. One is, if you take your mouse and put it between the formula bar and the column headings, there's a sweet spot, and then when you find it, you'll see a double north-south arrow. Click your mouse and hold down, and you can devote more room to the formula bar. Now this is a zero-sum game, so whatever space you give to the formula bar, you take away from the spreadsheet portion. So you will be sacrificing the view of your data for being able to see more of your formula. If you pull your formula bar down to a position that you think is going to work well for you, let's say three or four rows, but sometimes you only need one row, but sometimes you need three rows, instead of manually dragging this up and down, you can go for the formula bar's collapse button. Once the formula bar is sized the way you like it, when you collapse it, it goes back down to a single row. But then when you need to see multiple rows, you can click that button and expand it and not have to drag down to that specific number of rows. So now you can just one click back and forth, switch between minimized version and maximized version. The keyboard shortcut for this is control shift U. So if you'd rather use the keyboard, a control shift U will work. Now let's look at problem number three. When you start writing longer formulas, or if you receive a spreadsheet from somebody who wrote a long formula and maybe it's not working and you're having difficulty figuring out what they're even thinking in this formula, it might be nice to break the formula down into steps and have each step reside on a separate row. The key to this is while you're in edit mode, if you hold down your alt key and hit enter, this will perform an in-cell carriage return. So going to strategic locations within my formula and pressing alt enter, of course now I'm going to need more rows to see my formula, I can go through and break the logic into smaller, more manageable pieces. You can do this as many times as you like. You'll have to come up with your own style of where you want to break your thoughts. Just for extra readability, I like to go in and add spaces after my commas and even between my nested parentheses. For me, this just makes things a bit easier to read and to keep track of. So I'll go ahead and commit that. Now, if I don't need to see this whole formula, control shift U, I'll collapse my ribbon. That way I can devote that space to my data. But if I need to see this formula, control shift U, I can look at the formula and it's much easier to read being broken down into multiple rows. Now remember, I told you if you stuck around to the end of the video, I'd show you a super cool way to zoom in and out of your spreadsheets. Now this doesn't have anything to do with the formula bar, but since we're talking about making things easier to read, I thought I'd throw it in. To zoom in and out of a spreadsheet, most users will go to the lower right-hand corner of the screen and use the zoom control. And so here you can zoom in and out. But you can also do this by holding down your control key and spinning the wheel on your mouse. This works in Word, PowerPoint, your web browser. Almost all the major applications you work with will probably support this control spin the wheel trick to zoom in and out. Once you get used to zooming in and out with the control mouse, you'll rarely use the zoom control in the lower right any longer. 
So those are three ways to make your formula bar a little easier to work with. If you have any suggestions for something you'd like to see covered on this channel, please put it down in the comments. Who knows, maybe next week's video could be the answer to your question. Thanks for watching. And remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.